Peace, family. Doc is in the building. Hope everybody's weekend is going well. Turn this light on. Peace, family. I want to show y'all something before I start this lecture, right? Real quick one. You know how they say, if it's raining outside, the devil is beating his wife? You ever hear that? If it's raining outside, then the devil must be beating his wife. <laughs> when it's raining outside, the devil going to beat his wife. It's the devil beating some wives. The wives are the people. Today, the devil's going to be the scholars. So we got all this rain coming down with the sunshine. How did I catch that to do this lecture? I want you to think about that for a second. So, yeah, y'all see the shirts. Don't worry, they're coming. I ain't dropping nothing until I start this first town hall for the campaign. And it's coming up soon. So look, I want to hit this Ramadan controversy and I want to hit it direct. Because I've been covering this for years. Over a decade. And what I want to say is, Look at that rain coming down, coming down harder. What I want to say is that if there's anybody, any scholar on earth that can prove me wrong from the Quran, from the oldest uh, material culture of Islam, that means the oldest masjid, the mosque or temples. That means um, what has been reviewed by archaeologists about those earliest temples, where the first Quranic verses showed up at, who wrote them, what the actual texts say from the papyri, which are the oldest texts, and lastly, good old common sense. Now, I wrote a book. It's 437 pages. Let me show you what it is. It's this book right here. I wrote this book. It's 437 pages. All right? Let me walk in because I'm, I'm outside on the, on the garage. Let me walk in. Walk in the house so y'all can get some good light. So y'all can see this. All right. 437 pages. All right. Take a look at it. So what I'm saying to you is, it's obvious, it ought to be obvious, and this is not the only book I wrote about it, it ought to be obvious that I took a lot of time out to study this subject on Ramadan. And so what I'm telling you is, culture is everything. Islam, hist Islam historically, is black, commenced in the borders of what we now call Africa, and that tomorrow does not start Ramadan because the calendar that's currently being used by, Ram by for Ramadan had nothing to do with the Quranic calendar, the calendar of the first Muslims, or anything recorded in the material culture. Had nothing to do with it. So tag all your friends in this video that are Muslims. Tag them. Let them come on into the comment section. 
And I have money on the fact that I'm right. I have money on the fact that a billion people have been deceived. And it's not very hard. You can get a billion people to eat pork. Don't mean it's healthy just because a billion people eat it. That's the reasoning somebody tried to use today is because a billion people do something that authenticates it as accurate and in our best interest. And so when you know the history of Islam, you know how important it is to African people and indigenous people here in the sense that the connection historically pre-European invasion was high between West Africans and Aboriginals here in the Americas to the extent that they, they made schools, had whole cities and civilizations with an exchange of culture, language, agriculture, etc. That's already been proven. So what I want to say today is I want to prove to you that tomorrow does not start Ramadan, that if you're a Muslim and you follow the five pillars, if you could prove me wrong, then I'm just a wrong guy. I'm just a guy talking. If I'm accurate, if I'm accurate, based on the teachings that the messenger gave us, based on the Quran, based on the earliest material culture of Islam, if I'm accurate, then a billion people have been deceived. One billion. Think about that. So I'm, I'm willing to put that on the line and I'm about to show you and prove to you that what I'm saying is accurate. So let's go. Open this book up. What is the calendar of the Quran? How do you calculate a year in the Quran? How did the early Muslims calculate a year? And what calendar systems were they using? So I'm going to take you to the 18th verse, right, of the Quran. And I'm about to expose the calendar. I'm going to show you what was known. That surah is called al kaf 18th surah. So let's open up the Quran to the 18th surah. Then I'm going to give you my elaboration and I'm going to end this in a few short verses. 18th surah, 25th ayah. I'm going to end it. Bring your scholar, bring your money. This goes out to anybody in the Morris Science Temple of America, uh, fellow FOIs in the Nation of Islam, um, Sunni Muslims, Shiite Muslims, Salafi, whoever you are. All right. I'm going to show you this, and uh, you can follow along with me. You can follow along with me. Right here, we're in the 18th surah, 23rd, 24th, 25th verses. All right, this is the followers of Al-Kaf. And what's happening here is that they're trying to calculate how long they stayed in this location. All right? And so here you have the original, so you can see the numbers, all right? And here you have the translation by this particular author, all right? And here I'll read the English. Say not of anything, I will do that tomorrow, unless, inshallah, Allah, Allah please, all right? And remember your Rab or your master, your Lord, <clears throat> when you forget us and say, maybe my Lord will guide me to a nearer course 
to the right than this. And they remained in Al-Kaf 300 years. And they add nine. They add nine. Right here. And they add nine. All right. Tisa. All right. Or Tisa'a. Depending on how you want to use the Fatah at the end. So check this out. The calculator in the Quran, who is Muhammad, is calculating how long they stayed in the cave. And he gave it as 300 years according to his time. And he said, and they add nine. So the, here's the question. <laughs> who are these people in this cave that he's referring to? And why did he say 300? And he said, they add nine, which is 309 years. He's making a distinction between his calendar and their calendar. So let's look at this from the Lost Pages of Islam, page 126. Let me show you. Surah 18, verse 26, exposes their Arabs lunar 350-day calendar versus the original Muslim star and solar and tropical calendar. The verse calculates the what? The domestic calendar time of the companions of Al-Kaf, the cave, as 300 years versus 309 years on a lunar calendar. 300 tropical sigio years is approximately 109,575 days, which equals 309 years in 354 uh, on the 354-day lunar calendar. This solar synchronization was a signature of the Nilotic Sudan, Egyptian culture, in veneration of the ancestor Ra, and in veneration of calculating based on the sun. So, 309 years in this verse is talking about the people who are not followers of Islam. And they lived in these caves and they're trying to calculate how long they've been in these caves. So the timing is everything. One is based on the star solar calendar. One is based on what? The lunar calendar. Let's go further. Surah 9, verse 36. Let's go. Surah 9, verse 36. I'm going to show you the tropical calendar, which is based on the sun and the movement of the seasons in the Quran. Check this out. Got it in both. Surely the number of months with Allah is 12 months by Allah's ordinance since the day when he created the heavens and the earth. Of these, four are sacred. Four. Now, they give all kinds of explanations for this. Brothers and sisters, let me break this down to you real quick so you get it. The four periods that they're talking about are the four seasons, the, the equinoxes and the solstice. That's how simple this is. All right. So let me break it down to you. Let me, I want to show it to you visually so you can see it. All right, give me a moment. Let me get to it. So check this out. Anybody who understands the history of these people understands that astronomy was the basis of their culture. And I'm about to prove it very, very quickly. Just give me a moment to find this chart again. The astronomy of it. All right. Here we go. So check me out. Here's a calendar, right? You have the sun in the middle, 
Earth right here in all these positions. In different hemispheres, you get different seasons. These are the four cardinal points. Over here, you have summer in the northern hemisphere, winter in the southern hemisphere. By the time you get here, right, you have fall. Fall in the uh, north, <clears throat> spring in the south. Then when you get here, because of the tilt of the planet, you have what? Winter in the north, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, you have summer. Then you come to spring, all right? Spring in the north, fall in the south. So look, all you have to do to understand what's in the Quran, in the verse that I just read, is understand astronomy. This verse right here, four sacred periods are talking about astronomy. Whatever they tried to talk about in the other aspects, all right? No, they made it up. And so I'm gonna keep going. So now we know, we know that according to history, Ramadan is the ninth month, right? It's the ninth month of a calendar year. So ask yourself a question. If, Ram if Ramadan is the ninth month on a tropical, solar, and a star count, what month is it supposed to take place in? I'm going to make this very simple. We're on a Roman calendar right now, right? Okay. If we wanted to know the ninth month, how would we figure it out? We would say, oh, we started in January. That's not when they started their calendar, though. The wording for the months tells you what the original count was from the Roman calendar. And when you know where they got the count from, you can count. So if we say Deca in the Roman language, what does it mean? It means 10. So December in their system, where, you, we, where the current Westerners got it from, Deca is the 10th month. December is the 10th month. If we want to say nine, we say Novum. Novum. Right? If we want to say eight, we say octagon. So we say October. All right? October. Oct means eight. Right? If we want to say seven, we say set like Septimus Severus. Sept means seven. So we know where to count from now. So let's go back to our astronomy and figure something out. The year does not start on January 1st in the Roman civilization or any other ancient civilization. It starts here in the spring. And between these four points, one, two, three, four, right? You got four points. Each period is three months. So if you start from the spring, three, six, nine. Got it? The ninth month ends when? On the winter solstice. What is the winter solstice? It's the longest night of the year. What did the early Muslims who studied astronomy call the winter solstice? Lelat al-Qadra. Lelat, night, al-Qadra, of power, of destiny. Why did they call the winter solstice the night of destiny or the night of power? It's because every time you have the winter solstice, you have an alignment between the earth, the sun, and the star that was used by the early Muslims to count the year. It's called a sidereal year. It's the most accurate astronomical way of counting the year. And I'm about to prove it to you from the Quran. Let's go to Surah 53 of the Quran and see what star they use for the initiation of Muhammad into a system. That's one. For counting the year. That's two. And for marking when Ramadan started, 
so that we can end the controversy because we know Ramadan started when Muhammad began to receive his teachings from uh, Jibril. That's a fact. So let's go. All right, I'm running out of power too, so this is gonna be quick. I only got 20% left. All right, so look. Here it is. By the star, Al Najm, Ida, Hawa. When it sets, by the star when it sets, Wa Al Najm, Ida, Hawa. By the star when it sets, by the star when it sets. What star? And what happens when the star sets? Your companion errs not, nor does he deviate. Who is your companion? Muhammad. Nor does he speak out of desire. It is not but what? Revelation that is revealed. One mighty in power has what? Taught him. The Lord of strength. So he attained to perfection. And he is in the highest part of the horizon. That's a mountain. It's not Mount Hira. It's only one mountain mentioned in the Quran. We're going to show you where that's at. So this is when he's getting taught. It's marked by the setting of a star. So let's stay in the same surah and see what the star's name is. The star's name is mentioned right here. And he is the Lord of what? Sirius. Right? Look at it. And he is the Lord of Sirius. Wa Rab. All right? You see it right here. You see it. Excuse me. Wa ina murab al shira. And he is the Lord of Sirius. And certainly, all right, he is the Lord of Sirius. That's a constellation. What's so important about the constellation Sirius? It is how we count using astronomy modern annual cycle on this planet. That's how you count it. So in this surah, where it's saying the star that is setting, when you calculate when Sirius sets every year, that's the start of Ramadan. It happens every year at the same time, not 11 days earlier. You are following satanic Arab scholars. That's my point. And I'm about to end this by showing you the physical star when it sets. All right. So here you have November 25th. This was 2012 when I wrote this first material. The sun is rising in the east, 6.57 a.m., and what star do you have right here? It's about to set. As the sun is rising, it's about to set. By the time you get to December, by the time you get to December, the star is setting exactly when the sun is rising. Why is that important? Because all the archaeologists who studied the first temples of Islam proved that the mihrab, which is the place that the imam faces for Qibla when he prays, were all facing what? Not Mecca, which is not even mentioned in the Quran. What were they facing? We're about to tell you. What is the real Qibla? The sacred direction in Islam, a study of the interaction of religion and science in the Middle Ages. Interdisciplinary Science Reviews, 1985, Volume 10, page 319. King states, some of the earliest mosques in Iraq were built facing winter sunset. Only recently has it become known that the astronomical alignments were used for Qibla so that modern historians have mistakenly inferred from the orientations of the early mosque in Egypt and Iraq 
that they were not built to face the Kaaba at all, but rather to face some other sacred site. Now, however, we even know why such astronomical alignments were used by Muslims who built the first masjids, the Umayyads, the black Muslims who spread from Egypt across into Mali, over into the Levant, over into Arabia. And they burned down Mecca. Why did they burn it down? Who burned it down? Muhammad did it himself. Because you haven't learned who Muhammad was. So let's keep reading. The archaeological evidence of two Umayyad mosques in Iraq that Al-Hajjaj, it should say Ibn Wasi, all right, noted by Cresswell as the oldest mosque in Islam of which remains have come down to us. Cresswell is the archaeologist. And another are the actual sites where the mihrabs face in directions other than Mecca. This work was recorded in the Cresswell archives of the Ashmolean Museum of Art and Archaeology by Professor K.A.C. Cresswell, a pioneer student of early and medieval Islamic architecture. The difference of mosque orientation and corresponding winter sunrise and sunsets azimuths for the cities is small except for Kufa, all right, where the, uh, where the orientation of the mosque is closer to actual Qibla. This shows that the early mosques, except for Kufa, of course, were astronomically oriented towards their corresponding winter sunrises and sunsets. Why was it marked that way? It was marked to chart Ramadan, which occurs every year in December, bruh. According to astronomy, it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that told us that if your religion is not rooted in astronomy, it's fake. Why? Because religion is just a constitution. It is a body of law to govern people. But they rooted it in astronomy to root it in natural law and nature. They rooted it into astronomy because the astronomy, the universe itself, is the Umil Kitab, the perfect book from which all books are written. The first book, before man and woman write down something on pieces of paper, the first book is nature, which is expressed in the universe. You can't get around it. So this is why we were able to throw, overthrow the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire because we had our original system. What do you have now? You have a bunch of phony, inaccurate, supplanting information from Arabs. Right? And so it's been infiltrated. It's been infiltrated. It's been totally, substantially infiltrated. And so what I want to show you to end this off, people coming behind me, is this. I want to show you what this text says. Excuse me. I'm supposed to have this charted. I don't want them to pull up in the car and uh, I'm in the way. All right. So what does the word Ramadan mean? The word Ramadan means to see perfectly. I'm going to prove it to you. Ra-mada. And it has a suffix. Ra-mada. Ra means to see. Mada means that which is uh, pure, perfect, penetrating. I'm going to prove it to you. All right. So here's a verse that I just mentioned. This is from the same surah I was reading, 53, where it says, Ma'a kadaba al fuada ma'ra. 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 What does it mean? The inner mind did not lie about what was seen. Ra. Now, what do we know about 
that use of the word Ra. It represented the sun. So how is it that the early Islamic system was based on charting the sun? The word Ramadan has the prefix for sight, which is impossible without the sun. And it meant to see perfectly, which they did. They fasted during this period to the Laylat al Qadra. And they were doing invocation salat. Invocation salat is when you visualize what you want to happen for the next year and the night of power seals it into existence. So you notice it's a black culture because they practice divination. But not this fake divination, divination from the creator. So y'all who want to follow Arabs, and I could go all day. I could show you when they changed this. I could show you the Buddhist scholars who they employed. Matter of fact, I'm going to name them right here. I have them in here. I'm going to tell you who the Buddhist scholar is they employed. All right. He was from the Barmakid family and Harun al-Rashid and Khalif al-Makmud Makmun incorporated the Barma kid family, which who were Buddhists, to begin to produce hadith. Right? Here's his name right here. Ephadul bin Sal, a prominent member of the Abbasid court as vizier and lead scribe, assisted Harun al Rashid, uh, son, Khalif al Makmun. The Barma kids, right? would fill the scribal and chancery positions of this caliph. He was the Abbasid. This is when the pale Arabs came in. Baghdad became the capital of Caliph al-Makmud, um, took it upon himself to attempt to erase Abd al-Malik. He covered Abd al-Malik's name at the Dome of the Rock with his name, right? They have this. He went in and did this. Now, what else did they do? Let's keep reading. Following the old oriental tradition, he obliterated the mention of Abd al-Malik's name in the midst of Abd al-Malik's protocol. Abd Allah Amir al-Mukminun al uh, al put his name and title. So who is Abd al-Malik? That's the real Muhammad. He wrote the first Quranic verses at the place they now call the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock was actually the original Kaaba. Under al Makmun, the Jews, Zoroastrians, and Christians all established official books themselves in written forms due to the invention of paper in the East that the Abbasids had co-opted from the Asian populations. Baghdad became the home of publishing these books, inscribing the books we are so familiar with in respect to biblical and Zoroastrian texts. This is, look at the source, Hidden Origins of Islam by Karl Heinz Orley. So look, when people, I tell people, that the Quran was a book before the Bible, they don't believe me. But you don't have to believe me. It was Arabs who got together with Jews to produce Bibles. The Quran was already written in papyri by the black Umayyads who founded Islam. And their name is mentioned in the seventh surah of the Quran, except it's called Umayyah. The Umayyah are the Umayyad, and the Umayyah Nabi is Muhammad. But that's the title. His real name was Abd al-Malik. He wrote the first Quranic verses uh, right there in the Dome of the Rock. You're done. You're done. So tomorrow, all you idol-worshipping Arabs and all of our people over here, no matter whether you are more, no matter whether you are fellow FOI, whoever you are, you have been served with an aboriginal warrant. The warrant details that for the last thousand years, you have been following an enemy to Islam. You have been following an enemy to Islam. That enemy now has descendants who have kept up this lie. I, for the last decade, have been warning you, stop following them. Right? So you can do as you like, but I have 437 pages of fire for you. And any argument that you bring on the history of Islam, 
I can destroy it in a matter of minutes. You've been served. You've been served. So all of our people who wouldn't listen to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who tried to try to tell you that Ramadan was in December, who said, man, black people ain't received no messenger of Allah. All of you. All of you who feel like that. You in deviation. You in deviation. And so you can follow who you want to follow. Right? Y'all can diss the messenger all y'all want. But let me tell you something. Can no scholar here, black American scholar who follow Islam, say nothing to what I just said? Nothing. None of them. They can't say it. And if you consider yourself a brother, don't get upset about what I said because I didn't disrespect anybody. All I said was what was in the documents. That's all I said. So go get your best Islamic scholars because they will be praying with their enemies starting tomorrow. The children of their enemies. And the reason why they're enemies is because they don't have their best interests. The culture that they practice, they don't have their best interests. Islam, Islam was a war. It was a war between indigenous Africans and Romans and Persians. It was a war. That's what it was. And it was a war for government. It wasn't a war for religion. It was a war for land, assets, rights, culture. All right. That's what it was. And that's what it is now. All right. That's what it is now. It's a war. So all I'm saying is to all my Muslim brothers who are out there, who are original people, the only ones I'm interested in. I'm saying to you, what you going to follow? You going to follow your enemies? Right? Nobody on earth, right, nobody on earth is about to defeat what the messenger said. Nobody. Not even his students. His students are not about to defeat what he said. They're not about to defeat it. And so... Y'all could call me all the names y'all want. Calling me names won't change the truth that I just exposed. And if it's not the truth, present your case and defeat it. Right? Right? Hey, you can say what you want to say. Let's say the messenger did say that. That's the reason. I don't care. The point is, Look at what I just put down. If what I just put down is not facts, present your argument. Defeat what I just put down. And the other point that I had was the only mountain mentioned in the Quran, because it says that he was at the highest point of the horizon, which is a mountain. The only mountain mentioned in the Quran is Mount Sinai. Only one. And it's called the blessed mountain. When you go to the papyri, you look at who was in Mount Sinai in Egypt during that time period. It was the Saracens. Saracens is the old name for Muslims that the Romans used. And who did the Romans say they were fighting? The Saracens, Nobates, and the Barber War and the Blemies. The Barber War are the Berbers, Saracens. They were all united in a syndicate across uh, Africa. And they fought against Rome and they defeated them. But they defeated them with a system. You don't have that system anymore. All right? All right? So I'm putting money up. I'm putting money up. I got my money on the table. Any offer that you make, I'll match it. A thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand, whatever you put up to the table, I'll match it. Put our information before the people. Put the money in an account and it gets transferred to the nine judges who look at it and say, damn. He or he presented the truth. That's how simple we solve this problem. All right. That's how simple. And I will never, ever, ever sit in a masjid 
and pray with the descendants of my enemies with unresolved issues. They're going to act like they have not enslaved Africans for over a thousand years. Some countries just ended slavery in the 80s and 90s. They're going to act like, I'm talking about pale Arabs. They didn't invade the Moorish civilizations and the other black civilizations. We're not going to act like that. And they're still raping, killing, maiming, and carrying out a slave trade. And none of their Arab leaders will say anything about what's happening in Libya right now, where women, men, and children are being sold. African leaders are not even addressing the issue. And it's rooted in their perturbed, sociopathic, racist version of Islam. And none of the American leaders over the Islamic communities are saying anything or starting any human rights activity to stop it. But they're going to go pray with people who just left those countries. Some of them who sold some of your brothers and your sisters. Bruh. Boycott it. Boycott it all. It's a fake Ramadan and you disrespecting our ancestors. It's fake. It's fake. You say it don't matter. If it's fake, I'm still going to pray. Who and what are you praying to? What circadian rhythm are you on? You on the circadian rhythm of a grafted people? And you're going to follow them? And you ask yourself why you can't get success, but they come in your community and they sell you pork? Assalamu alaikum. They all throughout, they're not in the white community selling pork. They're in the black community. Why? Because they've been taught and they know we've been doing this for thousands of years. I'm done. Hopefully I shared something with you that uh, gave you what you needed, but I'm done.